Hi Verbling, my name is Michaela. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, and today we're talking about English that is international. So some words that translate into almost every language, or words that have been borrowed from English into other languages. If you guys have any questions on the lesson or want to talk to me about private lessons, tutor classes, or anything else, you can reach me at Facebook, and I'll put my Facebook name in the chat box for you, or you can send me a message on Verbling. I will also put the notes in the chat box. We're going to be reading an article, talking about it, and if we have time, maybe listening to it. So we're going to be hitting almost everything, reading, listening, conversation. And I expect to talk a little bit about the World Cup game last night. I was on the edge of my seat. It was really sad that the U.S. had to tie with Portugal. I was hoping we were going to win. I suspect we don't have much of a chance with Germany. All right. So, while I wait for some students to join, I will screen share the article we're going to be reading today called Angst in Germany over Invasion of American English. <laughs> hi, Christian. How are you? Uh, hi. I am fine. And you? Excellent. Have I had you in class before? Uh, we do never. It's the first time. It's great to meet you, Christian. Where are you from? Uh, I am from Chile, but now I am living in Sweden. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> so far. <laughs> it's cold, probably, but nice. <laughs> yeah, begin the, the summer, but it's rainy a lot. Ooh, oh man. And did you happen to catch the game last night, the soccer game between the U.S. and Portugal? Sorry? Did you happen to catch the game last night between Portugal and the U.S., the World Cup game? Uh, about the world champion? Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. We are really excited for that. <laughs> four hours more, we have a, like a final. Ooh, well, good yeah. luck. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Rafael, welcome to class. Hi, How are you, Rafael? I'm okay. Did you? I'm doing very well. I'm sure you're preparing to watch Brazil's game today, aren't you? Or you said you're not really that into soccer. Are you going to skip the game tonight? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll watch. Mm. All right. I've been watching. It's been pretty exciting, actually. I'm usually not really a soccer fan, but somehow I'm in the middle of everything that's going on and everybody's watching, and I feel like this excitement is contagious. So I've been enjoying it. I know, I know. I imagine. Huh? I imagine how, how, yeah. <laughs> how the environment is. Yeah. Rafa, welcome to class. Rafa, are you there? Uh, oh, oh, my mic. Yeah. Hey, Rafa. I like your Good new morning, picture. Rando. Yeah, yeah. I changed my profile. Where is that taken? Uh, it's taken in Iceland. Wow. In, nice. In, yeah, in front of one iceberg, pretty Were nice. you there on vacation? Yeah, I've, I've been there. I was there last summer visiting. All, the whole island is pretty nice with a lot of water, um, mm -hmm. icebergs surrounding everywhere, icebergs, um, snow, pretty nice. 
Wow, what an interesting place to take a vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Certainly Very not cold. the traditional. <laughs> yeah. Colder than Spain. Mm -hmm. It's better for the result. All so. right. Well, good to have you, Hafa. Abdullah, welcome to class. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you perfectly. How are you, Abdullah? Uh, well, I'm quite well. Yeah? Do you have it's a uh, nice week coming up? Uh, well, I had a rocky start. I think I will not have a <laughs> good week. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah. That's already Monday, and you're saying that it doesn't look like a good week. That's a bummer. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> is it a lot of work? Um, a lot of personal problems. <laughs> mm, that's the worst. I'm sorry. Well, good luck. Mm. Oh, thank you. I need it. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Ismail, welcome to class. Thank you, Michaela. How are you? Hi, everyone. I'm doing Hi. I'm doing very well. And Ismail, did you catch the game last night? You said you're not that into soccer either, but I feel like everyone should have seen that game. It was so suspenseful. Oh, I didn't watch the game last oh, night. Oh, man, you missed out. It was a very exciting game. It was the U.S. and Portugal. And we almost, the U.S. almost won the game. In the last 10 seconds, Portugal scored a goal and we tied. It was very upsetting. <laughs> but hopefully we'll, we'll have a fair chance with Germany and we'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe there's, there's a small chance the U.S. will still make it in, but I don't have much hope for that. So... Anyways, I put the link for the notes in the chat box. Today we're going to be reading an article and also, if we have time, listening to that article. I'm going to put them in both chat boxes. But before we begin to read that article, I want to know from you guys, what are some of the first words you knew in English? And try to think about words you knew before you started learning English. So things that are commonly used in maybe your native language, but that they're actually English words. Um, I'm going to start with Rafael. Do you have any good examples of words you knew before you even started studying English? Well, since I work with computers, there is a word initialize. It's mm. a word kind of brought by U.S. vocabulary because we don't have this word in Portuguese, but we are using this as a uh, normally nowadays. Interesting. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of vocabulary terms that are in English that are used in other languages as well. So you probably know a lot. Yes, some of them. Cool. Very cool. So initialize, that's a good one. Hafa, can you think of any words you knew before you started studying English? Yes, I am trying to memorize, uh, remember what kind of words. For example, the stress is used regularly uh, and also is very popular in Spanish and is, has roots in English, stress. Ha uh, also, um, words related with computers like hardware or software are very mm -hmm. used here. Um, uh, comp many times when you are talking about business company uh, in Spanish is a different one but uh, uh, is use company uh, with the same meaning that in English Wow, Perform great examples hmm. Yeah, that's a lot Ismail, can you add on to the list we have going so far with initialize and stress and other computer lingo? Exit. 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 And where have you seen exit used before? Computers? Uh, I saw in many big buildings and metro station there are ah. green exit uh, written. Yeah, very cool. So. Yes. 
in big places they might have signs translated into English. That's a great one. Christian, do you think you could come up with any words you knew before you even started studying English? Uh, sure. Uh, I think that, for example, uh, the word shopping. Oh. Or like a mall, you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, because um, really the, the precise word is like a gallery in Spanish. I, I see. Know, but we use a normal shopping like a store, big store, you know, with Mac, mm -hmm. with mini store inside. But I think that the people have in the mind that word all the time. <laughs> no, nothing to translate, understanding the first one. <laughs> yeah, that's an excellent one. I forgot about that, but I think I've heard that here too. People say shopping instead of mall. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. And I think that, if, for example, in, in, the, in the companies, um, um, begin to get many um, uh, concepts. For example, if, if the if the people is intelligent or have uh, many skills, it's like um, um, I don't remember the name, but it's like a uh, well, I don't remember <laughs> now. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. If you think uh, of it it's, later, it's just clever. Clever. Oh, clever. Oh. Yeah, it's typically used in a company when the people is you're intelligent. That's so funny. That's a really cool word that people are using. Yeah. So it's used for someone who's smart in business. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's, it's like a normal, I think. Use. Very cool. Thanks, Christian. Ahmad, welcome to class. Hi. Hi, class. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So right now we're listing words that are sort of international English words, things that you might have known before even studying any English. Okay. Um, uh, the word okay itself. Okay. Ah, good, ex <laughs> good example. Okay. Yeah, totally. That's a super common one. Yes, it is. And another Abdullah. One. Oh, yeah, you have another? Go ahead, yeah. Ahmad. Yeah, the other one is uh, the word uh, pe penalty uh, in football game, soccer. Oh, do they use that internationally? Uh, I don't know, but uh, in Saudi Arabia, we use it as it is. Penalty, we yeah. might just, uh, w with a little twist, if we said balanti, you know, <laughs> it is penalty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. We it, yeah. We use it in Turkish to penalty. Yeah. penalty. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of the uh, football game terms are used also in, in Turkish as well. Yeah. Interesting. So you kind of have both. You have some English words for them and also some Turkish words. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Mm. I never knew no. that. On the line, as Mehmet said before, uh, football words are always in English, in Spanish. Corner. Uh, penalty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the word yeah, football. I, I do agree. Yes, you are right. Yeah. <laughs> Off, uh, uh, another one is uh, offside or offside, offside. Ah, uh, yeah. When, yeah. Like when the, when the ball are, goes over on the side of the court or the yeah, side of the yeah, field, right? Offside. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Interesting. That's pretty cool, and also a little strange. I'm not sure why, because you know, obviously the U.S. is not really historically very good at soccer, and England is kind of good at soccer. But it's interesting to me that those are those words are borrowed. Uh, soccer was invented, as far as I know, in England. Oh. And all the words come from from the British language, I think. Oh well, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for clearing that up. I didn't realize. Very cool. All right. Do you guys have any other words to add to this list we have of international English? Okay. There are so, then we, there's, there's huh? so many. There are so many that we uh, that we cannot came up with any words. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's hard to think of them because they're so normal that it's like you don't even think of them as borrowed words or words that are not native to a yeah. language. I know that um, a couple I've experienced every once in a while, I need to know the word for something in Portuguese or in Italian, and 
I'll discover that the word is exactly the same in English and in Portuguese or whatever. Like, for instance, flash from a camera um, is the same in Italian and in English. I'm not sure about Portuguese. And then things like airport terminology like check-in is the same. Yeah, yeah. And one I discovered really recently that I think is really funny is the word grogi, grogi which is the same in Portuguese and English. Now, I'm not sure if these are all inter totally international words, but um, I have heard the word groggy in Portuguese, which I think is really funny. Um, Rafael, do you know the word groggy? Uh, yes, I think when you are... when you are dizzy, I think. Yeah, when you're like dizzy or maybe sleepy, you can say groggy to mean that like you're not really in your in your fully functioning mind. Like you're you're a little bit a little bit out of sorts or you're not feeling very well, you're not functioning very well. Almost like I'm I'm sick, like a little sick or something. Mm -hmm. So we use groggy and I recently heard it in Portuguese and I thought it was so funny that it's the same in Portuguese and English. Well, uh, we it's Many things are. Oh, sorry. No, no, <laughs> it's okay. Go on. Go on. Go on. It's okay. And I think that maybe it's using in a boxing. In boxing? Yeah. The term groggy? Yeah. When the uh, when the a boxer, it's like a tired with many fights in the face, mm, or really mm -hmm. tired. It's like a groggy. Yeah, you totally could say he's groggy. Yeah, once he's like tired and he's just not really on his A game, he's not doing his best, you could say he's groggy for sure. Interesting. And Abdullah, did you have something to say as well? Yeah, yeah, groggy is also used in German as well. Oh, wow. See, but and I, it's funny because I don't know, it might come from German. I'm not really sure. I, but I have never used it. I mean, I have heard <laughs> it, but I have never used it. I mean, it's colloquial. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. So, uh, open up the article and we'll get started reading about the invasion of English, <laughs> which Indeed. has some people uh, a little worried, you know, that natural traditions and culture and language will be lost to English. <laughs> so, it's called Angst in Germany over Invasion of American English. And we're going to read a few paragraphs in this and then talk a little bit about what you guys think about the invasion of English, if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. So I'm going to start with Abdullah mm -hmm. and ask you to read just this first short section that I'm highlighting here, the first two uh, paragraphs. Just let me see. Oh, okay. Um, it seems hardly a sentence is spoken in Berlin, but that doesn't have an American English word in it. One word that especially grates, and I confess to a certain bias, having learned German as a toddler when it wasn't so Americanized. It's a word pronounced hmm, soji, soji, I don't know, or <laughs> as Americans say, sorry. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. And Ahmad, will you read this section here that's just the the three lines and then the next paragraph, not all these words in yeah. there. <laughs> Soji, your package is late. Soji, your hot water is off. Soji, we can't help you. Ana Anatol? Anatol? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Stefan. Which is, I don't know how to read it. <laughs> it's like <laughs> German. Uh, an English, oh, an English linguist, <laughs> linguistics prof uh, professor at the Free University of Berlin says it makes sense that many German businesses have adopted that word. Thank you very I much. Need... Okay. Okay. The next short section is going to be for Christian. The part that's highlighted. Okay. okay, can you help me? Yeah, yeah, yeah go sure. ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, sorry, it's quite a useful way of apologizing because it doesn't come in 
you to very much. It's very easy to say sorry. The closet equivalent will be uh, <laughs> uh, which is <laughs> which is uh, apologize. Stefano which say Thank you very is, much. Uh, okay. The rest of the paragraph <laughs> is going to be for Ismail. Okay. That's really like admitting that you have done something wrong. Whereas with saying sorry, you could also be expressing empathy. I am so sorry for you, but it has nothing to do with me. Thank you very much. Uh, this first half of this paragraph is for Hafa. Will you read it for us? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. From sorry, sorry is one of the more than ten thousand, ten thousand. Thank you. American words Germans have borrowed since 1919, 1990. Language experts here say English is the main foreign language that has influenced German over the past six decades. This cultural infusion is infusion is per pervasive per per with English mm -hmm. used by journalists, by scientists and even at the highest level of government. Okay. And then Rafael, you can read the next paragraph. Germany doesn't really have a very purist attitude to language, unlike France, where you have an academy whose task is, is it to find French alternatives for borrowings. Or if there is a new technology that needs to be named, then the academy will find the name, Stefano, Stefanovich says. Thank you very much. Okay. So we're going to take a break here for a second. And first, I'm going to ask about vocabulary questions. Do you guys have any vocabulary questions from the words we read? Um, yeah, I have one. Um, what does pervasive mean? Pervasive. pervasive. Does anyone know the word pervasive? Nobody? It means like throughout. Something similar to throughout okay. or widespread. Okay. All right. Infusion. Uh, yeah? Infusion. Uh, infusion. Before pervasive. Good because one. I Does anyone know that word? The word infusion? Uh, infusion means the, well, this cultural. Um, Mix? No, not mix. Mm. Similar to mix. You're on the right track. To insert. Well, well, if you if you infuse something, you um, you get an infusion. For example, if you in the hospital. Mhm. Mm so mm -hmm. it is, you know, you get a needle that is infused in your vein, veins, veins. How do you say that? Veins. Veins. Yeah. And that goes into your body, let's say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means that the English language um, has, let's say, added to the German language. I don't exactly, know. yeah. So what you're talking about is usually called a blood infusion, mm -hmm. or yeah. I guess that could be transfusion too. But an infusion is when you add something in, or sometimes you can say, like with tea, you have a tea bag and you infuse the tea into the water or juice or whatever you want. So when you mix one substance with another substance until they're sort of combined in a way that you you can't extract the tea. Once you put tea in water, it's not like you can take out the tea. It's kind of permanently in there and absorbed into the original material. Thank you. Awesome. 
Anything else so far? Okay. If you guys think of vocabulary questions, you're also welcome to put them in the chat box so we can go over them. And right now I'd like to stop and pause and see what you guys think about this because I've definitely heard a lot about how French culture is very concerned with preserving French and instead of adopting English words they're trying to come up with their own so that it doesn't uh, there's no infusion of English and French and French remains pure and it seems that it's kind of common maybe in Germany as well there are some people worried that English will infiltrate and take over their native language. I'm going to start on the right side with Rafael. What do you think, Rafael? Do you think it's possible? Are you afraid of the infusion of English? Yes, it's really possible. It's really possible nowadays. This world is totally globalized and we have lots of cultural influences by the, not only for the United States but also Europe and other countries. And I think uh, uh, it happened the same with you and other countries, which are influenced some. There has received some influence by us, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not really afraid about that. I think it's uh, if it's a, if if it's a way to which will help us to communicate better. We find a better way of, of communication. There is no problem for me. Uh, some people are afraid that the country might lose their identity, uh, and but I'm not really sure about that. I don't think it's a think it's a matter of evaluate. You know, it's um, people evaluate. Habits change, so everything changes. Why why cannot we change our language, our culture? I think. Mm -hmm. True. Good point. Ha Rafa, do you agree? What do you think? In Spain, my country, there is a real acad academy of the language that trying to per that in uh, trying to preserve our uh, culture, our language, uh, front in front uh, influence of other language like uh, English or France, French, and also fr France has a similar regulation with the French. And also here in Europe, in Europe, there were an uh, important fight between Germans and British because uh, they tried to get the most important language in the co in the in the European community, uh, one of them, or English or German. At the end, uh, Germany win the battle, and English is not so popular, not so important. Like uh, like German, but also as Rafael said, um, any kind of language has a lot of influence. It is impossible to preserve a uh, language in his own for the whole time. The influence is, mm. is constantly. I think. Yeah, that's, that's true. Thing. It's pretty impossible to keep anything the same for too long. Interesting, okay. Ismail, what do you think? Are you a little afraid of the invasion of English and what it might do to culture or language? Yes, uh, Nicola, I'm afraid uh, of this process because it is uh, very common in my country, especially nowadays, uh, many people try to use uh, foreign words to show that you they can speak in a foreign language to other people and mm -hmm. many uh, construction building restaurants offices are using foreign names yeah <laughs> that's <And> true sometimes <laughs> I see some photo photo uh, in uh, Facebook. People ask, "Where is this street?" There is a <laughs> th there is a street photo in Turkey, 
you can see lots of uh, shops on this street but uh, you cannot find any Turkish uh, syllable in this photo <laughs> and people think that it's a, a street in a different country wow yeah you i mean yes, and we we have also a, <laughs> an uh, academy and which is try to find the turkish uh, word for foreign foreign or uh, generally for english word uh, they they try to find out but people uh, are not willing to use uh, that word. Mm, interesting. Because so even if there is another word, they use the English word. Yeah. Yes, yes, people uh, want to use uh, a foreign name for, for a restaurant. I don't know, maybe uh, they give a different message with, with their foreign name but uh, I it is very common in my country and I am afraid of this I don't like wow. actually every language should uh, live in your uh, in that country all right so it does seem like some of this globalization is taking over a little and yeah. it's hard to distinguish between one street, a street in one country, and other places. That's surprising. And Michela, it it should be maybe a balance. Uh, yes, I understand. In a while, it is unstoppable uh, process because if you uh, find uh, some technologic things and develop some uh, computer uh, idioms, it is. Uh, not uh, to possible uh, to use this uh, terminology, but mm -hmm. uh, it should be in a, a small balance between uh, own language term idioms and foreign language terms idioms mm. which we use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, balance is always best, I guess. Christian, will you follow up that comment? So far we've had a lot of different opinions. What do you think on it? Uh, and I think that um, um, in, a, in, a, in a world that we are living really global and we communicate really fast with Internet, um, many information about that some solution that you can find are in English for many people uh, inclusive if the people f for another uh, uh, country for example Sweden or French that if you want to communicate with the people around the world the most common thing is speaking English for the people understand that and um, the many areas in the different business begin to use um, um, many concepts in, in English, I think, I begin to mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. uh, this, that's important thing, for example, the commercial things um, for the tourists um, and a concept for use more simply work when you stay working, for example. For no, I speak about that, uh, the, the old concepts if not, you only need to use uh, only word, for example. Mm -hmm. for, for example, groggy. If you, for example, you stayed in a hospital, you are uh, you were there, and uh, a person have a problem, you say, ah, he's groggy. You know, <laughs> and <laughs> people begin to understand. Yeah, definitely. Totally okay. true. All right, Ahmad, add your opinion to the mix we have so far. Mm, well, um, I think uh, it is okay to learn, uh, but I think we we have to like differentiate between them. I mean, uh, we might use it like um, when we say, for example, uh, 
in general, if this uh, term is uh, uh, it's popular, um, we still can use it, but we like uh, we uh, we have to know that uh, we should find a, like alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or so there should uh, be equivalent. An in the native yeah. language and in English. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And Abdullah, you're the last to go. Tell us what you think. Is the invasion of English a negative thing, a positive thing, or neither? Abdullah, are you there? Michaela? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. There we yeah. are. Sorry, I got a problem with my microphone. Okay. Uh, uh, the problem is that you cannot stop the invasion of Americanisms. I mean, um, they are a part of our language, which we use it every day. And if you try to look for an alternative, or if you try to replace it with your own language, uh, everybody look at you as as like a stranger. You know, they will tell, "What the hell are you talking about?" or something like that. Um, the problem is, we should learn both of things. We should also try to keep our language, and we should also learn um, the. You now the loan words from other languages. So, you know, I think that's the balance that we should have. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, if you try, if you really try to, um, how to persuade people to use uh, words that are not English or that are not um, foreign, uh, foreign words, you now the people won't do it. So try mm -hmm. to find, yeah. They don't want to, because they are used to it. They are, they grew up with the words. So, and we are surrounded by these. I mean, we see it in the commercials. We see it at school, uh, at restaurants, everywhere. In football. So, yeah, that's my yeah. opinion. Definitely something very difficult to fight against. Mm -hmm. If you do believe it's negative, it's difficult to to find a way to stop the English invasion. Very difficult. Yeah. All right. And Akka, welcome to class. Yeah. Uh, yes. Hello. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? Have you been following our class? Uh, I just came back, so uh, uh, I, I didn't follow the class. Sorry. OK. So, well, the yeah. notes are in both chat boxes. And okay. right now, we're discussing whether the invasion of English is a good thing or a bad thing. So there's a lot of English words in other languages that are used, and it's becoming more and more common to use Americanized English words for computers or for travel, airports, mm -hmm. even for things like sports. So what do you think? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, for the English learner like me, it's, uh, it's a somewhat good thing, but it's also confusing because you know, the Japanese adapted English is not always right for native speakers. For mm -hmm. example, handle. <laughs> handle in ja Japanese English means steering wheels. So still, <laughs> I sometimes <laughs> automatically say the handle for steering wheels. That's confusing. <laughs> and <laughs> and non-English non learners, uh, Japanese uh, learn English uh, at minimum six years. So they know some e easy sentences or some easy words, but uh, you know the, uh, nowadays you know a lot of people are saying in English, uh, mm -hmm. so that's confusing. <laughs> they, cannot, they cannot follow the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know the PC or uh, CD or such kind of thing, maybe using English is much more convenient to invent new word in Japanese. So. Mm -hmm. It's okay to do with such simple words, but uh, mm, unnecessary uh, uh, English uh, naming is uh, confusing, especially people who don't know English so much. 
<laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah, it can get confusing, especially with things that are similar, like handle versus steering wheel, which are very similar but totally not the same. So that that can mm -hmm. be very confusing. Yes. All right. We've got one more comment on this in the chat box before we go on to our article. It is an unstoppable process to not use foreign words. But we should give permission to this process up to some extent. If we don't do, our language might deteriorate at the end. I think that's a good point because some of it is unstoppable and if you refuse to change, you really will just be left behind. Is that what you're saying, Ismail? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Michaela, I think yeah. it is not good for English too because there are uh, different types of English around the world and it is difficult for new learner and it is not good uh, for a language. I don't yeah, like to, for example, my language invade uh, the other language around the world. Mm -hmm. There are our poverty. There's what? The languages are our cultural poverty, I think. Mm -hmm. they oh yeah, should, that's a good point. They should live mm -hmm. without deterioration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without deterioration. So I think it is important for each language to keep some of what makes it unique instead of changing all of the words for another language. And uh, Rafael has a good question. In your comment, Ismail, it says to not use foreign words. It's an unstoppable process to not use foreign words. I think you meant to use, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So to use foreign words. That makes it a little more clear. Thank you very much, Ismail. Those are very good points. And let's finish the article here. We are now on this highlighted paragraph starting with even purely. And we're back to Abdullah. Abdullah, will you read that paragraph for us? Are you there, Abdullah? Huh. All right. I bet. No? Abdullah, you're muted. You know that, right? Okay. Uh, Abdullah, we'll come back to you. Ahmad, will you start for us and read the paragraph that I'm highlighting? Mm, okay. Uh, actually, I can't. Yeah. Mm, I can't see where you have highlighted, really. but is it uh, even purely? Yep, that's the one. Okay, because I can't see it on the screen, but I see it on my screen. Well, <clears throat> uh, even purely uh, domestic uh, enterprises like the German rail system are getting into the English game. Uh, Christian Renner waiting at Berlin's main station for a train home to Frankfurt says uh, it's useful to know English words if you want to find a waiting area. Thank you very much. And the next two paragraphs here that are very short, it's Akka's turn to read for us. Okay, I'm not sure if calling it a uh, lounge is better than using the German word Waterlachum. Water uh, Rainer says, I guess it's more modern or hip. One more. Okay. Uh, also confusing uh, to some German uh, passengers is the word for the main ticket center. Instead of the, of the German word, uh, Zentrum. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Thank you very much, Aka. Christian, will you read the next two short apps here? Okay. Um, also confusing to some German passengers is the word for the main ticket center in sense 
of the German word Zentrum. One more for us. Uh, okay. To some language expert, like Holger Kloet, the Widdell Street American nation of German is problematic. Kloet is the spokesman for the German language society, which the has 36,000 members worldwide. Thank you very much. And the next two short paragraphs here are for Ismail. We read where it starts with languages do tend and ends with not know any English. Languages do tend to affect one another. But the influence of English in Germany is so strong that Germans are having a hard time advancing their own vocabulary, she says. Kletel says that can be a problem for Germans who may not know any English. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next paragraph. Um, Rafa, will you read the next paragraph for us? Yeah. The Second World War and Nazi times have led Germans to downplay the importance of their language, he says. Unlike the French, Finns, and Poles, they promote their languages. Oh, I lost. A lot more than we do. Thank you very much. And Rafael, will you get this next paragraph? Stefanowicz believes the linguistic angst, a word that migrated from German to English, it's overblown. He says a quarter of all, of all German words are borrowed from other languages. That's more than what's found in Mandarin Chinese, but far less than the 40 or 80 percent seen in English, he says. Thank you very much. So I think this paragraph is really, really interesting because it does seem kind of strange and confusing that many people are, or many languages are borrowing English words. And it is something to worry a little bit about because we obviously want to maintain cultural differences that make us unique. But English is actually a huge percentage of borrowed words as well. Most words in English are borrowed from other languages. A lot of them have Latin roots. Some of them, like the word angst, has German roots. And many, many other languages are involved as well. So I think that's kind of interesting and cool. The next paragraph, we're back to Ahmad. Will you read that paragraph for us? Uh, OK. Plus, Germans uh, integrate the words they borrow for example, the suffix gate, as in Watergate, which was voted last year's uh, Anglicism, Anglicism <laughs> of the year in Germany. Yeah, okay. Stefan Nowitz says it has been used, among other things, to describe the NSA spying scandal on the German uh, chancellor as Markel Gate. Thank you very much. The next couple lines here are for Aka. Go ahead and read those for us. Okay. Uh, borrow, uh, borrowing doesn't mean that the language loses its vi vi uh, vitality. It's an uh, addition of creativity. No language has ever disappeared because it's borrowed words. Uh, Stan uh, which says. But he says there are uh, pit pitfalls to overdoing Americanized German. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next paragraph, Christian, will you read it for us? OK. Um, I think I need to read about he says. Take, for example, okay. is okay. what it starts with. OK. Take, for example the word handly, which, which is what German called their cell phones. 
uh, Stefanowicz said, people here assume it's English and uh, in its an English word, and it may have come from the word handheld to distinguish it from car phones when cellular technology was relatively new. Thank you very much. And that last line there will go to Ismail. Go ahead. He says the danger to such made-up words is that Germans could end up using when trying to speak actual English. Thank you. All right. So this is kind of a funny ending. It turns out that it's similar to what we were mentioning before. I think Akka mentioned when people call, they use an English word to refer to something that's different than what it would actually be used for in English. So handle instead of steering wheel. And one I've come across really frequently is shopping, which we talked about, instead of mall. So in English, people think shopping is what means mall, but it's actually not. Shopping is the is the verb. So you can shop at a mall, but you can't call the mall a shopping because there's no such noun in English. So it is a little confusing sometimes. All right. So first, let's talk about vocabulary. Do you guys have any vocabulary questions from anything in the article? There's a lot here. Anything you guys can think of? One word that I think might be unfamiliar to you guys is the word pitfall in the third to last paragraph, but he says there are pitfalls to overdoing Americanized German. What is a pitfall? Does anybody know? It's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah, like a trap. Something that might trap you into making a mistake or making an error of some kind. Excellent. What is, what's angst? Good question. Does anyone know the word angst? Yes. Yeah, I'm worried. Is a German word? Yeah. Angst means, um, how can I explain it in English? They're afraid of. Yeah, right. fright. I have. Right. Angst means fright in, in German. I, I in, in English. Yeah. Angst. I think it's something similar to the word anxious. I'm not sure how they're related in, in historically, but anxious is sort of similar to the word angst, like an anxiety, a nervousness, a fear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Vocabulary yes. questions? Yes, the word uh, downplay. Good question. What paragraph is that in? Uh, before. Uh, yeah, the paragraph before uh, the word angst. Ah, I see. So it says the Second World War and Nazi times have led Germans to downplay the importance of their language. Does anyone know what downplay means? Um, they, they, yeah, they try to make little of the language. Mm hmm exactly. They minimized its importance or um, they minimized when they use it or, or how big it should be. Make little of. Maybe. Yeah, make little of would be an excellent definition. Okay. What about mitigated? That's in the next paragraph. Stefanovic, st wait, oh, Stefano, yeah, Stefanovic, I guess, Emoid. believed this linguistic angst, a word that mitigated from German to English, oh, migrated, like a, sorry. Migrated, yeah, migrated bird. Migrated that comes from, from German mm -hmm. to English. Mm -hmm. Migrated. Okay. Anything else? Any other vocabulary words you guys uh, see? What or? Is Finns and Poles. Unlike French, Finns and Poles. Oh, Finns are people who are Finnish, and Poles are people who are Polish. So ah, they're from a, Finland uh, okay. or from that's Poland. A, <laughs> ah, okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So you guys can uh, continue to think of those vocabulary words if you have any questions on them. Just speak up. We only have a couple minutes left, so I want to hear if you guys have any further comments on where this article went. Because in the beginning, they were talking about how much borrowed, and then at the end, they kind of said, well, no language has ever been extinct because of how many words it borrowed. And also, uh, the, the greatest danger of borrowing these words, like Akka said, was that people try to use them in actual English when they're not exactly the same as the way that a Native American English speaker would use them. So do you guys have any other comments on whether it's good or bad or what effect it has? Yeah. I think as Ismar says, you know, the non-native speakers English now actually influence to the English. I, I read mm -hmm. the the short essay about globalish. You know, mm -hmm. non-native speakers communication uh, creates new type of English in the world now. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. language are alive, so they are kind of connected or kind of influenced each other. Totally. And they are always create a uh, new language in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Language is certainly alive. Any other comments before we head out of class today? I want to remind you guys that there is a, you can listen to this story as well, which I think would be an excellent follow-up to this class. You can listen to it and see how much you understand. It is a report meant for native speakers, so it is fast. But now that we've read through the article, I think it will be much easier for you guys to, to hear everything they're saying. And if you need help, there's the transcript. So you can click on the transcript and read along with the oral report on it. All right, comments or questions? Anything before we leave today? Thank you guys so much for coming to class, and I have another class in a couple minutes about music. We'll be talking a little bit about music and listening to some simple songs that I think you guys will find easy to understand. So if you're interested, I will see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.